How you doing? It's Wednesday morning here in Tuscaloosa. The wee hours of Wednesday morning, 14 until 2 a.m. with Mr. DJ. Gonna cut a few videos for my fancy playlist of December, uh, actually October. Well, the day today is December the 7th, 2016. My gosh, that's the date of Pearl Harbor back in 1941. Um, but count down my fancy playlist of October 26, 1996, at number 14, one of my favorite songs from the 90s. I always felt contented. I, I don't, don't, ask, don't, don't ask me to explain. It's like trying to tell a stranger about rock and roll. But I always felt contented. I always felt good. Saffron, the lead singer, just killed the vocals on this record, which is fantastic. Republica, ready to go at number 14, down from number one. Oh, it took a big drop, but there were a lot of good songs that were on the move, too. Polka's ready to go at number one. They're from England. Their music was described as techno-pop uh, punk rock. Techno-pop punk rock. I can see that. Uh, Sap, th this is the thing about the 90s. We see a humongous rise in the female singers in the 90s. Of course, there will always be quite a few in the 60s, 70s, and, and particularly the 80s. But in the 90s, uh, on the solo side, you had Alanis Morissette, you had Jewel, and there was Juliana Hatfield. Remember Juliana Hat Hatfield, Universal Heartbreak, and Spin the Ball, which was a lovely record, and My Sister back in 1993. And there was uh, the female bands like Luscious Jackson. I believe Farouk Assault was all female, too. There was a couple of girls in that band, I believe, women in that band. Garbage was, and there was the bands that were fronted by female vocalists. Garbage with, I believe it was Shirley Manson was her name, who fronted that band. Lush, Elastica, remember the song Connected back in 1995. And uh, so we have, we have Republican, but only had two hits. And they were not hits here in America. But headline, Muzak's top 40 outlets showed the love for Republica. That's where I heard Republica was on headline. They played the heck out of Ready to Go, and they also played Drop Dead Gorgeous, which came after that. Although, if I do remember correctly, MTV did play. Now, this was late at night. MTV, they had already moved to the reality shows during the daytime. But uh, late at night, after about midnight, 1, 2, or 3 o'clock in the morning, they were still playing videos. And uh, they did play this one by Republica. I love the video to this record. All the uh, split second shots of of Saffron. Republica started out in 1994. Uh, Tim Darney, formerly of a group called Flowered Up, he was a keyboard player, and Andy... Andy Todd, I believe is his name. Like I said, I scribbled down stuff. I write real fast. Uh, they formed a group, Republica, and they added Saffron as a lead singer. She was an actress, and uh, and I didn't know this. This is just, this is so serene. This is just serenity. Absolutely. I did not know this, but Saffron was in the video, The One and Only by Chesney Hawks. The next time I watch that video, I'm going to look out and see if I can see her in that video. That is so lovely. That was one of my favorite songs back late summer, fall of 1991. Chastity Hawks, the one and only. That was a fantastic record. She was in that video. God, I just found that out, too. Anyway, the group, they released a single in England. It, England was really their center of their popularity. They never took off here in the States, except on college radio, on MTV. Of course, Hitline played them, but nobody... Well, Hitline played them, and also the alternative radio stations probably played them too, and that's about it. They never crossed over to top 40 here in the States, which is a crying shame. God forbid if I get on my soapbox again. There are just so many fantastic records that never made it over here. But anyway, uh, Republica released their debut album. It was self-titled in 1996. Ready to go of... Uh, there were several versions of this, of this record. At first, it didn't do too well in England. Went to number 43 in Britain, but then it was re-released and went to number 13 in England. And then their follow-up, Drop Dead Gorgeous, where Saffron was even more aggressive in, the, in that record. This was definitely closer to punk than uh, Ready to Go. Ready to Go was probably a little bit more commercial. But Drop Dead uh, Gorgeous had punk. It was it rocked alternative, but it still had commercial viability to it. And uh, went to that one went to number seven in Britain, and I had that on my fancy playlist in the top ten or top twenty. <clears throat> excuse me, in nineteen ninety seven. And after that though, they came out with Speed Ballad, 
I uh, believe the name, yeah, Speed Ballad was the name of the album after that. And uh, it didn't do as well. For one thing, the record label folded, Deconstruction folded. And the album could not be promoted. That album, their second album, was never released here in America. And the, all the back catalogs of these of deconstruction of deconstruct of deconstruction records, including uh, the music by Republica, the stuff that they put out was a sword by BMG. Their catalog was, and the group went on hiatus in two thousand one. But we're in nineteen ninety six right now, and I believe that's all I got to say about this about this uh, about this record. Man, love it. Number fourteen on my fancy playlist. Ready to go, Republica.